Once upon a time, there was an island called No Money Island. There were twenty people in the island, and each person had one product or skill set, which he had to trade with the others to satisfy his needs. The island didn't have the concept of money, and the islanders bought goods and services through barter system. You trade what you have with someone else. Who has what you want and wants what you have? In general, suppose that a person consumes or uses twenty different things every day, which are produced by twenty different people. So he had to maintain a price list of these twenty things, vis a vis his product or skill set, in order to trade for that thing with his product or skill set. Similarly. Another person inhabiting the island would have to have a similar price list, with a vis the product or service he is producing. Mathematically, this becomes an arithmetic progression, and in all the island would have to maintain prices of one ninety products and services, that is twenty multiplied by nineteen by two, one ninety price lists to track trading of just twenty products and services. Inefficient system, isn't it? The other problem. Consider this case. Person A produces soap and wants to replenish his wheat stock for cooking purposes. Person B, who produces wheat, however, doesn't need soap immediately, as his stock of soaps is still enough to last another month or so. Now, person A would have to wait till the wheat producer's soap stock comes down. Another. Acute crisis situation, isn't it? One of the twenty people was an economics professor, whose skill set was only delivering economics lectures. He suffered from the same issue: how to pricing his lectures against other products he needed, such as soap or wheat, having to wait for wheat till a time when the wheat man was ready to take another lecture. Many a times. The wheat man was not able to assimilate the previous lecture for a long time, and the professor had to remain hungry. Another issue that pained him was of how to secure his future. He was growing old and wasn't sure how long he would be able to deliver lectures. He was worried that sometimes in future he will not be able to deliver lectures. Obviously, he will not be able to trade them for the goods and services he needs. His key issue was how to monetize the lectures now and store somewhere, so as to be able to use them when he grows old. The professor then went to King of the Island, raised the following concerns: "I am facing a lot of challenges in living in your island. What are they? I will tell you one by one. The first challenge is double coincidence of wants. To sell my talent." I have to find someone who has a good or service that I want, and who also wants the good or service I have to offer. The challenge of pricing: how to price? There is no common yardstick benchmark on which to price offerings of individuals. I may sell three lectures for one cloth, and two lecture for a kilograms of wheat. The price itself may vary over time for one exchange combination. The weed guy may not be keen on buying my lectures. In which case, I have to lower the price to two lectures for a kilograms of wheat. At any time, there are one ninety prices that need to be kept track of. As the population increases, the numbers will increase geometrically, hence unwieldy. The challenge of savings for future exigencies. Most of the day-to-day -day needs are of perishable nature. Over a few years, for example, rice, soap, or intangibles like lectures, there is no way one can save these for use. Say, ten years down the line, I will retire in another five years and can't deliver lectures, and feel that I will have nothing to bank upon for my sustenance. The professor concluded his problem. Double coincidence of wants, difficulty in pricing, storage of wealth for future. King started the discussion with his finance minister, 
I am worried about the challenges the professor has pointed out. And now that he says it, I also feel that the issues are very valid. Please help resolution on priority. Let's first analyze all the challenges one by one. Double coincidence of wants. Yes, the problems are very valid and we have to find a solution in order to improve our standards of living and make our people flourish. I had been thinking about it for a long time. We need something which can be used to buy products and services instead of having to exchange the product and services directly. Everyone has that something and it facilitates the purchase of goods and services. If economic professor need to buy wheat, he gives a part of that something to the wheat man. If the wheat grower needs his lectures, he independently gives the professor that something and the professor gives his lectures to the wheat man. So, no need for waiting for either side to generate demand of each other's skills before transacting. That something, of course, could be anything of value and anything that is respected across community. More about this shortly. Pricing inefficiency Create a price structure for all 20 products or skills against that something. One kilogram wheat could be valued for some units of that something. One serb could be valued at another unit of that something. So, a common benchmark or a yardstick against which things can be priced. So, this way, the number of prices to be kept stock of would reduce from 190 to 20. Store for future wealth. That something is sacred and respected across the island can be used 10 years down the line to buy products and services. This something could be stored somewhere and used whenever needed. If someone needs resources for the future, he can start storing that something from now on to be used later for buying those resources. The discussion also threw up the following characteristics of that something. It must be divisible so that it is easy to make change. For example, one kilogram of wheat could be five unit of that something and one soap could be one unit of that something. It must be easy to carry. Example, if that something is too bulky, say wheat, it would be difficult to carry to the market for transacting. It must be able to be stored for future needs. That is, it should not be perishable or intangible. It should be precious. That is, it should not be available in infinite amounts. Example, air is available free to everyone. This something needs to be precious. Else, everyone has it and then no respect for it. Let's now summarize the key characteristic of that something. Should be a medium of exchange. Should be a unit of measurement. Should also be a store of value. And most importantly, it must be universally acceptable. Everyone must be willing to take it in payment for goods and services. What should that something be? After loads of discussion, all the ministers came up with an idea which was to name that something, they came to a consensus that an object that clearly has value to everyone, for example, gold or silver can serve all the purpose of being that something. Everybody liked idea and consensus converged. Gold as that something. Because it meets the above defined criteria and all the characteristics, everyone had affinity to it. 
and everybody was willing to put faith on this new product. They named it as money. <laughs>